Hello, welcome. This is Jennifer, and I'm glad you're here. Today I'm sharing with you many ways to use press plates creatively. Now, press plates are a newer product. They're meant to be used with the Spellbinders Better Press system, which gives you a letter press look. However, there are many more ways you can use them, which I will demonstrate today. If you do not have a better press system, no worries. I will mention along the way how you can get similar looks using dyes or other products. And I, of course, have other tips to share along the way. Before I get started, I wanted to mention two things. First, if you are new to the Better Press system and you really want a closer look at it, I will link to a video up here on the top right at the end of this video and in my description below, and you can watch that also. The second thing I wanted to mention is something I don't usually bring up in the beginning of videos, but I think it's really worth checking out, and that is the upcoming Pink Fresh Studio Create and Connect event. This is a virtual card making event that's happening towards the end of February. I really like their events for many reasons. One is a lot of product is included, so much product, and they have bonus material on top of the classes, and they have uh, Pretty Pink Posh in collaboration in this event. So this is a really unique experience and something that I am very, very excited about. If you're interested in more information, I have it in my description below. Okay, let's get started with the video. We're gonna do this card here first, where I show you how to do multi-inking with the Better Press Plate, and I show you how to create a see-through card very easily. Now this is the Spellbinders Better Press system, that's the tool over there on the left. You use it in conjunction with a die cut machine, and you can check the manufacturer's website on what die cut machines are compatible. I will be demonstrating with two different machines today. I'll be using Spellbinders Porcelain Better Press Cotton Card Panel. This is a very soft, thick cardstock that really takes the press of the plate, so you get a nice impression. However, you definitely could use regular cardstock for this, and you'll get that really detailed result. I put a little bit of temporary adhesive on the back of that cardstock panel, and I'm putting it right there in the center on the back side of this clear plate. Actually, both sides are the same, so it really doesn't matter. Now the clear plate has magnets in the corner, so it just pops right on top of that platform and kind of hovers over the platform. Now onto the platform itself, onto the gray magnetic grid portion, I'm placing a trellis press plate from Pink Fresh Studio. This is what this video is all about today, these press plates that are meant to be used with this Better Press system. However, I'm going to show you many ways to use them without the Better Press system also. I line that up there in the center of that gray grid, and now I know that my cardstock on that plate will line up with it nicely. Now it's time to ink up the press plate, and I found that you really could use a large variety of inks to ink up your press plate, and I'll demonstrate a few in today's video. I'm starting out with Pink Fresh Studio Dye Ink. I'm also setting up my Gina K Intricate Die Cut Machine. This is a newer machine, and I'll put a link below to a video showing all about it. It has dials on the side that make it easy to figure out how to use it. I put the dial setting to the letter press, uh, 2D emboss setting, and it works great with the better press. I'm inking up the top area of my press plate with a yellow ink, and you just kind of tap on it. You could use a brayer, but I found if you just tap on it gently, you can transfer the ink with no problem. You then put the clear plate on top, it pops onto the four magnets, and then put it through your die cut machine. The die cut machine will press the cardstock onto the inked press plate, and that will press into your cardstock, leaving that yellow ink behind. Next, I'm going to move on to a mimosa color, like a peachish color, and I'm putting that towards the center of my press plate. And then I'll use a blending brush to kind of um, soften the harsh edges that I got there at the top and the bottom of that section. I want to get a blended look of this press going from like yellow to orange to pink across the background. So I'll put the plate back on top, run it through my die cut machine, and that will press the plate into the cardstock and leave that orange ink behind. And you can see how the yellow is blending into the orange. I could have put all of the colors of ink on at once and tried to blend it together on the press plate and then run it through, but I didn't feel there was a need to try to do that. 
Instead, I know that every time my plate will line up with my cardstock, so I can repeat this process for all the colors. This is one of the reasons I really like the Better Press system. It is really foolproof. It'll line up great every time and give really great results. Because it's pressing the ink into the cardstock, you get a really good ink transfer, so it makes it more foolproof than even stamping, even if you're using a stamp positioner. So you can see how each time that lines up and we're getting great, beautiful ink application with just one inking of each color. By the way, when I put that clear plate on top of the white handled platform, the magnets hold it there in place and leave a bit of a gap between the clear plate and the white platform. That means your cardstock or your paper in there doesn't touch the inked press plate until it's pushed down together by the die cut machine. That ensures again that you get perfect alignment every time. So check out this beautiful result. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. Such fine detail to this. More detail than I could get with the stamp. And it gives that slight bit of impression. So it's kind of a faux letterpress. Now it's not a super deep let, uh, letterpress look. I'll show you how to do that later on. This is subtle and with great detail and gives beautiful results. And notice the beautiful multi-inking result that I get that blends in and it took very little effort. That would be hard to do with the stamp. It's possible but not as good. All right now I'm using the coordinating die to cut out that piece. Now as I run this through my die cut machine to cut it, yes it might flatten it a tiny bit but it really doesn't flatten that impression very much. Because that press plate really pushes into the cardstock and changes it, you don't have to worry about die cutting after and really losing that look. Now before we move on, I thought it'd be best to show you just how much of an impression this makes, just so you have a better idea. I get questions about this a lot. So I am going to use the same press plate with the same type of cardstock, but not any ink. So I'm gonna leave this uninked, and what will happen is it'll just do the pressing in of the press plate, not transfer any ink, just giving us that impression. And here is the look that you get. It isn't as deep as an embossing folder, but you get much more detail by making the impression with a press plate like this. I think this would be a beautiful, subtle background and just a great way to add a little bit of interest and a bit of texture. Again, I'm not using this piece today. I just wanted to show it to you. And by the way, I wanna show you one more thing before we move on, using that same press plate, because I think it's beautiful. You can also use these press plates to do foiling, and it gives fantastic foiling with really detailed, uh, solid results. So I have my Spellbinders Glimmer foil machine here. I put my press plate on top of the hot portion of the glimmer machine. I put some foil on top face down so that the pretty side of the foil touches that press plate. Then I put a piece of cardstock and I'll put my two plates on top that come with the glimmer machine. I'll allow the timer to run, it's like a minute or so, and that really warms everything up. Then you take all of that out and run it through your die cut machine. And this will give the pressure along with that heat to do a great foil transfer. If you're new to Glimmer Foil Machine, I will put a how-to video below. But look at the fantastic result that you get. I find that I can get such detail foiling using that press plate. So here's the story. Your press plates that you use in your better press system can be used to foil, but your foil plates should not be used in your better press system. That's just a one-way street. So your pr press plates can be used to do an impression like on the right or to foil like on the left. And I'll show you some other things later on. So let's go back and finish this card before I share more press plate ideas. For the focal point there, I'm using an older Pink Fresh Studio stamp set that I love. I love this little flower cluster. And I have the stamp set coordinating dies and coordinating stencils. Off screen, I white heat emboss that floral image on peach cardstock and use the coordinating die to cut it out. I place that die cut on my Brutus Monroe stick and stamp mat. That'll just hold it and my stencils in place as I ink on top. Now I'm not really using these stencils as they're intended to be used. They're intended to fully color in this floral image. 
I wanted to keep mine tone on tone and just add some darker ink towards the center of the flowers to give that look of dimension via inking. So I'm placing the stencils down and just adding some darker color ink over parts of it, mostly towards the center of these stencils. So there are a lot of products out there with layering stencils that color in an image. Don't feel that you have to use them all and don't feel that you have to use them to fully color, color an image and do something colorful. You can change things up like I'm doing here to get a different look. This will be tone on tone, but with the look of dimension. Now let's put our card together. I die cut a few peach circles. They're a bit larger than that floral image and that's where the floral image will sit. I'm gluing one of these onto our press plate background and then I will take the other one and glue it on the other side. That way it'll look pretty on both sides of this panel. You definitely could skip this one if you wanted to. I just like the clean look that it has to offer. I'm using Gina K Connect liquid adhesive so I can be sure that it holds well. Now at this point, I changed my mind. I decided I wanted a white circle mat around the peach. So instead of taking that peach circle off, I'm putting a slightly larger white circle die cut on top. Then I'll take another peach circle and glue it on top of that. This will give me a little more dimension and I just really like that fine white trim around the peach circle. It makes it stand out on the, from the background a bit more. I'm using a press plate set for a sentiment. This is the Pink Fresh Studio Favorite Things Sentiment Press Plates, and it includes the dies. The dies cut out all of these sentiments very close, which I like because you can add it to your card without covering up much behind it. I chose one of those sentiments and I'm putting it onto my Better Press platform. Now, I'm afraid when I go in with my big ink pad that I'll get ink all over my platform. I could clean it off, but here's another trick. I just put a post-it note behind it. That way, when I ink up my press plate, I don't accidentally get ink on that gray platform and I can just leave that post-it note in there. And I have a scrap of cardstock that I've temporarily adhered to that clear plate and I'm running it through just like I did before. This time I used a black pigment ink so have a bold black sentiment pressed into that cardstock. And then I can use the coordinating die to cut it out. Now let's put the note card together itself. Off screen, I used the trellis die to cut from white cardstock. I didn't do the press plate on this, I just used the die. About a half inch from the top edge of this, I'm using my bone folder and scoring tool to create a score line. And then I will firmly press that down and fold it back and forth a few times. This will create a hinge that allows our card to open and close. Now I'll lay this die cut down flat and I'll put strong adhesive above that score line. Again, I'm using my Gina K Connect because that's nice and strong. And I'll place our card front right on top of that, making sure to press at the top of the card there. So now we have created a see-through die cut card base. But that area we put on the front, that circle, gives us a place to hide our personal message on the inside. So I'm flipping my card over and putting adhesive behind where that circle is on the front. And I'm gluing a white circle die cut. So this is the absolute back of the card, so I can do my hand stamped by Jennifer image on this. Then I'll open up my card and glue a white circle lined up with the others on the inside. This is where I can write my personal message. And because I lined up all of those circles on the front and the inside and the back, you don't have to worry about seeing through to the personal message when the card is closed or standing up but you still have all those little see-through holes all around it, which really makes for a special card. So here's a closer look at that subtle bit of inking that we did over that heat embossed floral image, and also the fun blended multicolor background that we got along with a bit of an impression using that press plate. So you don't have to use your press plate with just one color, you can do multicolors with one plate and get beautiful results with very little effort. Okay, let's move on to our next example where I do multi-inking with a press plate again, but I also make a deep impression with a press plate. By the way, the press plates that I'm using today are from Pink Fresh Studio. Spellbinders made the better press system, but now they're working with other companies to come out with press plate designs, and I'm excited that Pink Fresh now has them to offer. 
This beautiful fairy tale frame looks nice on the front of an A2 card panel. However, I'm going to show you a different way to use it. In fact, this is something that you could do with any frame die cut or frame that you stamp and die cut. Today, I just happen to be doing the better press. So I have the press plate on the gray grid portion of that platform and that's magnetic. So it's not gonna move as you ink it. I'm inking it with Pink Fresh dye inks again. I'm telling you, really, you can use a lot of different inks here. Any different dye ink or pigment ink I find works really well here. So I inked it up with a waterfall color. It's a beautiful, beautiful blue color from Pink Fresh. It's a newer one and one of my favorites. I'll run that through my die cut machine. This time I'm demonstrating with the Spellbinders Platinum just to show you there are different machines that the Better Press system works with. So look at that beautiful detail we get. Fine detail, an excellent transfer of ink color. So that is one application of color and you get great results. However, for the card that I'm doing today, I decided I wanted to have a little bit of darker ink on that. So I'm gonna start over here. I just wanted to show you that really one ink is all you need to use, but I'm choosing to use more today. So once again, I'm inking up that uh, plate with the waterfall color ink. And then I'm adding a bit of darker ink to different areas of this. This is the Atlantis color. I'm just tapping it in different areas, not really taking much care of where I put it. And I find that I don't have to worry about it much. Because the ink is getting pressed into the cardstock, it'll give great results. So this time I did multi-inking with one pass through and look at the fun result. We have some areas that are dark, some areas that are lighter because I used the two different inks, but all of it transferred well and left a great impression. Now you'll notice I was pretty messy with my inks. That's okay, I can use a baby wipe to clean this particular dye ink up. If you have a stubborn ink, you can also do a quick spray with Hero Arts Ultra Clean and then clean it up. But if you are concerned about getting ink on that gray platform, do what I did before. Put a really thin piece of paper between that gray platform and the back of your press plate and you could better protect it. But I find it always cleans up easily. Okay, so I used the coordinating die to cut that out and I repeated that process. So now I have two frames that are a mix of the two different blue inks. Instead of use, just using this as a frame on the front of my card, I thought it'd be fun to kind of create a focal point up in the top left by putting dif the different corners of these frames together. So and next time you have a frame die cut or a stamped and die cut frame, try this. This is a great way to change up the look. Don't think that you have to stick to how the product is intended to be used. Now for the white background there, I wanted to add something interesting to that. So I thought I'd show you a way to use a press plate to get a really, really deep impression. I'm not gonna use ink for this because I want it to be a subtle background. For this very deep impression, I will use my die cut machine and follow the instructions to make an impression or emboss with a die. Now my die cut machine comes with this flexible mat here, that gray flexible mat. Most die cut machines come with one or you can get one. And with that flexible mat, you can make an impression with a die. Well today I'm making an impression with a press plate instead. I have misted both sides of my cardstock with a bit of water and I'll lay that piece down onto that flexible embossing mat. Then I'll put my press plate face down and then run it through my die cut machine. The sandwich that I'm using here is the sandwich that is recommended for making an impression or embossing with a die, just following the manufacturer's instructions. But instead of using a die, I'm using a press plate. If you don't have a press plate, you can do this with a background die. Now look at how deep that impression is. It almost looks kind of pillowy soft, and it is amazing. So this is a really deep impression and another way you can use press plates. I will now trim this down to be four and a quarter by five and a half inches so that I can glue it on the front of my note card and it'll cover the entire thing. Now we can add our frames onto that card panel. Now I did die cut additional frames from scrap cardstock and glued it behind my inked frames so that these have some dimension to it. I'm making sure that the three frames kind of meet there up in the top left corner of my card, which will create the focal point. Now I often get asked why I use liquid adhesive so much 
in addition to the fact that it dries nice and strong, I get that time that I have some wiggle room to move things around. So you'll notice I decided to rotate one of those frames on the top and I was able to do that because I used a liquid adhesive as opposed to like a strong tape that doesn't have that wiggle room time. Once that's dried a bit, I can flip it over and cut off the excess and save those extra pieces of frame to do another card that's similar. All right, so now to finish this off, it was very simple, I did it off screen. I die cut a blue heart and added it at that focal point, along with a stamp sentiment that I die cut out. I'll show you that stamp set in a moment. Now look at the background. The white background is where we did the deep impression using the flexible embossing mat in our die cut machine. But then we have the really detailed, subtle impression with beautiful ink transfer that we did on those blue frame pieces and I did that with the better press. So two different ways to use a press plate, both giving beautiful results and very unique. By the way, that You Amaze Me stamp is from this uh, Pink Fresh Studio Artistic Dahlia set. This is an older one. I really like the sentiments in here and that you can die cut them very closely with the coordinating die, making it really easy to add to your card anywhere that you want. Let's move on to our next example. On this one, I'll be using my press plates in two different ways. Once to do a very detailed foil, and once with white ink for a very different better press, faux letter press result. This time I'm starting with the background and I'm using the new Pink Fresh Floral Square press plate. There is a coordinating die available, however, I'm just using the press plate today. This is a very detailed, fine line press plate and gives beautiful results. I also have a piece of regular white cardstock here that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches, and I'm drawing a pencil line right across the center at two and three quarter inches, just doing that light, and this will allow me to find that center point easily. I'm lining up the edge of that press plate with that pencil line, and I'll put some temporary tape there to create a hinge. I'll then flip that press plate back and slide underneath it a piece of prism foil. This is a glimmer foil and then put the press plate down on it. You want the pretty side of the foil to touch the pretty side of the press plate. I'll then flip that all over and put it onto the gray warmed up portion of my glimmer foil machine. I'll put the plates on top, press that timer button, allow it to run, run through completely. When it's done, I can take all of that out and run it through my die cut machine. So instead of using a foil plate, I'm using a press plate to do this foiling and wait till you see how intricate and fine line this is because I use a intricate fine line press plate. It foils beautifully and it also actually leaves a tiny bit of an impression. Now I'm going to repeat that process but moving that same plate to above the pencil line, creating a little hinge with tape, sliding some foil under there and repeating the foiling process. So I'll have two foiled images meeting there in the middle of our background. I really like how subtle this is, yet it really catches the light and adds quite a bit of sparkle. And then of course we can use an eraser to erase that soft pencil line in the middle. Next up on this card, I'm using the floral round frame. So it's a similar style, but this time round instead of square. And this time I'll use both the press plate and the coordinating die. By the way, they have a square, a round, and a hexagon. I'll use the hexagon next. I really like the style of these. Now this time I'm inking up my press plate with a white pigment ink. So before I use colored dye inks, this time I'm using a white pigment ink. You could also use a metallic pigment ink here. You just want to gently tap the ink over the surface of the press plate and then do the same process as you did before. This time I'm using a dark teal color cardstock and that white ink will really get pressed in and transferred onto that darker cardstock, giving such a beautiful result. Look how crisp that is. It's hard to get crisp stamping, white stamping like that with an ink pad, but it really is great with the press plate. And if you wanted it to be more intense white, you could do the same process again, leaving more ink behind. I used the coordinating die to cut that out, and then I added two more scrap paper die cuts behind that for a bit of dimension. And I'm gluing that right in the center of our foil background. I created another blue circle, same thing with the white pigment ink, and this time on a lighter blue cardstock. And I glued that circle up there at the top, and I'm gonna let it dry. 
While it dries, I add my, added a sentiment to the center. I'll talk more about that a bit later. And I'm going to now cut off the rest of that circle and glue the remainder of the circle to the bottom of the card. That way I could really make the most of the pieces I created. Next, I cut about a quarter of an inch off the left and right edge of that foiled background, and I'm adding it to a dark teal cardstock that's four and a quarter by five and a half inches. You can see the teal is sticking out on the left and the right. I then am taking a piece of holographic cardstock and cutting two very thin strips. You could do this from scraps too, but I had run out, so I got a new full sheet. And I'll run strong liquid adhesive right along the edge of that white panel. And into that adhesive, I'll lay one of those holographic strips. So this will make it look like that whole white panel was matted with that holographic cardstock, but really I'm just using a fine strip. So now on that right hand side, next to the white cardstock, we have that thin strip of holographic cardstock and then the dark teal note card peeking out. And to finish it off, I added a few gemstones to those circle patterns. Here you can see that foil in the background. It's subtle, but it does add sparkle and how the holographic cardstock matches it nicely. Then we have the impression that we made with the white pigment ink on that dark cardstock and it's absolutely beautiful. So crisp and very easy to do. Now that Just Hello sentiment is black heat embossed on white cardstock using one of my all time most used stamp sets. This is Just a Hello Floral. It's an older one but you can tell it's very loved. You stamp all the sentiments at once and then die cut them all at once and you have lots of them ready to go with lots of great sentiments included. Okay, let's move on to my next example. And with this one, I'll show you how you can heat emboss with press plates. It's very easy to do and is another way to get that metallic shine if you don't have a foil machine. This time I'm using the Pink Fresh Studio octagon frame. I think I said before it was hexagon. It's actually an octagon. I have that on my better press system. I have a piece of color cardstock taped onto the clear plate. I'm using my anti-static tool on both of those. And I will use Versmark ink, which is a clear, sticky embossing ink, and just gently tap onto the raised area on the press plate. I'll put the clear plate on top, so my cardstock's right over it, and I'll run this through my die cut machine. So when this plate presses into the cardstock, it's going to leave that Versamark ink, which is a clear watermark ink. So notice how the impression's a bit darker than the cardstock around it, which I think right here is such a detailed, beautiful result. You could definitely leave this as is. It's another way to use a press pl plate, but I'm using embossing powder on it. Because remember, we pressed in that embossing ink, the clear ink. So now I'm sprinkling on top silver embossing powder and heat setting it. Now the embossing will kind of balance out the impression that you made. And it gives a nice smooth result with lots of shine. Just one more way you can use your press plates. And then I repeated that process so I have four of those shapes. Now let's do our background. You see that white note card there has a piercing pattern to that. For that I used a pink fresh cover plate. Now this does not cut anything but instead leaves little faux stitching and piercing marks. This right here could be used for many of the techniques we did today, such as making an impression with the die and foiling. So just remember you can use products you have on hand for very similar looks. But I'm choosing to put this on the front of a note card, running it through my die cut machine like a regular die with the note card open, and that leaves that piercing pattern on the card front. Once again, I'll use a pencil and a T ruler to find the center point of this. This will help me to line up these on my background. Now at this point, I wasn't sure what pattern I was going for. I made a bunch of those octagons. I didn't need that many, but I wasn't sure what design I wanted, how I wanted to lay these out. And here you can see me experimenting on the design using this repositionable adhesive. I will be able to use all of those leftover octagons for another card. Once I'm happy with the design, I'll trim off the excess. However, you know me, I like to put additional dimension behind my die cuts just so it stands up from our card back and just makes the design feel a little more interesting. So I just use that rep repositionable adhesive so I can remove each of these and add some scrap paper white die cuts behind it. 
That way I can again trim off the excess and all of these die cuts will have a bit of dimension behind them. I could have put that dimension behind the die cuts at first, but I was afraid I wouldn't be able to cut easily through the layers. All right, and to finish that off, I added a Thinking of You Every Day sentiment. That was done with that sentiment press plate set I showed you back on the first card in this video. I did it with black pigment ink on white cardstock and used the die to cut it out. Then I also added some gemstones to the pattern. So with this example, you can see that you can also heat emboss using a press plate. Just one of the many ways you can use these intricate plates and get great results. Now with this video, I was hoping to show you that there are many ways you can use these better press type products. I know that when there is a new tool like the better press system and you are trying to decide if you want to invest in it, you want to know that it can be used in many ways. And that's what I'm hoping to show you today so that you can make a decision if it's right for you. I do link below to all the products that I talk about and the videos mentioned in my description. And at the end here, I'll link to a couple of those videos. I very much appreciate you spending this time with me. I hope you have a wonderful holiday season and I'll see you soon.